Hello, beautiful people on the other side of the screen. You are now tuned in to Audio Tree Live. Today is Monday, October 2nd, and I am your host, Psalm One. This year is flying by, and that means you might have a lot of Audio Tree sessions to catch up on, so you should subscribe now. Don't be a loser, be a winner. And while you're at it, follow Audio Tree on Spotify, Bandcamp, or wherever you bang your music. Today we have Laundry Day in studio straight out of New York City. These young men are a dangerously adept band with infinite styles, cleverly disguised as an American pop band. Eclectic, energetic, effervescent. I'm super happy to host them in studio today. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Laundry Day.
up I said imagine if you couldn't see yourself in the mirror Okay, okay uh. We're here with Sawyer, Jude, Etai, Henry P, and Henry W, better known as Laundry Day. Hi. What's up, Saul? What's, What's up? up Saul? Welcome. Hey, Welcome. Y'all yeah, sound really good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Feeling good in Chicago. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, quick question. How do we distinguish between the double Henrys over here? I mean, you can call me Hank. You can call me <laughs> HP. HP? Yeah, Everyone but in, a, in our group, usually we just know. When someone says Henry, we just have kind of figured out who Wh which one? each person it's, is. It's in the tone. It's in the it's tone. It's totally in the tone. <laughs> I mean, the nicknames run deep, but the telepathy runs that much deeper. Uh, so okay. we just know. Jesus. Yeah. I think okay. HPHW is clean, though, if you want to go there. Yeah. H, I, I would do like H Dub. Yeah, we H call him Dub oh, yeah, actually dub. a lot. Dub. Big dub. It's usually Dub. Dub is definitely the primary. I could do Big Dub too. Big P, <laughs> Big P, and Big Dub. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Sorry, sorry, sorry. All right. Relax, relax, relax. I'm confident that's sticking. So I'm alive. Yes. Yes. I mean, come on. This is pressure. How's Tor been? Insane. Tor. Yeah. It's been, uh, I mean, let's start with last night. Okay. We had a show in Indianapolis. Whoa, nap town. Yeah, the yeah. And then time. we were planning on driving all the way to Chicago after the show, which we did. Except 30 minutes after we left, we realized we forgot some crucial gear. Mm. <laughs> Computers, phones, back at the venue. So we turned around, went back to Indianapolis. Got a couple winks last night. Woke up bright and early and came here. So, I mean, it's a grind, but we do it because we love the music. We do it because we love performing and we love hanging out with each other. So yeah. that's a great reason. Yeah. Um. Did you have a good stretch this morning? Yes. Huh. Yes, I did. I appreciate you asking. I was actually talking to Angel outside about yoga, and it's something that I've been keeping up with on the tour because, I mean, it's something I do every day at home, and despite the extraneous circumstances, it just makes me feel so good. We've been doing it together as well. You do yoga as a band? He, d he taught a class. Yeah. A little bit. He did teach a class. I mean, we'll wake up in the morning, and I'll be like, where did Itai go? And then, like, he'll walk in with his yoga mat and his block, and he'll be like, hey, how's it going? And I'm like, well, you just got I'm spiritually like, oh, enlightened. Oh, God. Yeah, we're like, oh, no. Don't open the window. But he's our spiritual guide through everything, I would say. Itai, you're the spiritual guide, and you're also my hair twin right now. Yes. We are wearing very similar hair right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. Um, what's your hair regimen? I'm not going to lie to you, it's brief. <laughs> if, I'm, if I'm like combing in the shower, I'll use a conditioner, but usually if I'm leaving something in, it's just oil, like Jehovah oil is my favorite, and I plop it for mad long. I don't know if you do that too, but I just wrap it in a t-shirt for like hours. Uh, so my hair regimen is if I need it to look like decent on camera, even though it's wild, I still need to tame it quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, so it takes about two days for my hair to bake. And, and get to what you're seeing today. Um, if I don't bake it for two days, it looks insane. And I'll not in a good way. It's a process. It's a process. Yeah, it's a process. Yeah, you, know you gotta, gotta look good. Um, <laughs> you all went to Beacon High School in yeah. Hell's Kitchen, yeah. correct? Indeed. Um, I read up on that high school, and it's mm. a little different. Instead of standardized tests, students have to do performance-based projects. Correct. This is crazy that you looked that up. That's true. <laughs> I'm getting flashbacks uh, I'm, right I'm, now. I'm, I'm good at PTSD. stalking. That's why I got this job. I'm just good at stalking. <laughs> um, no, that's good research. Yeah. On some Nardwar. Yeah. Shout out to Nardwar. Uh, was this band a project or it no? It wasn't. The projects were less exciting than they sound, mm. but we were a product of the, the school in the basement was a whole music area. They had all these like little studios in there and acoustic guitars and everything. So I don't know if we ever did a project together as a part of school, but after school, it was all music all the time. And that's kind of how we all connected. So the dynamics of just being in that school together made the whole thing really Super click. creative environment, 100%. And funny enough, I told somebody the story the other day. There's a school in the city that people probably have heard of called LaGuardia. That's like a famous performing arts school. That's all like focused on your, you know, your art. And we all applied and got in and all decided not to go. And all ended up at Beacon, which is still very creative, but just a funny coincidence. We wouldn't be here today if one of us just went to LaGuardia with Timothy Chalamet and <laughs> went with that. Lady Gaga. But yeah, we still ended up with music anyway, so. Hey, then it worked out. Um, so what happens after high school? Y'all are clearly out of high school so how COVID. do y'all still COVID yeah, was oh, kind of wow. made it what it was I mean so yeah we graduated in 2020 but even before COVID happened we kind of knew that this was happening 
like in our senior year, we like before even COVID, we were missing so much school. So we barely went to school in senior year, including COVID. Um, <laughs> but like in the, our first semester, we went on tour like the first like two months out of the semester. Anyway, um, okay. And and we kind of just knew this is gonna happen, um, right? Like it wasn't even a hesitation. I mean, we were kind of, yeah, like Jude was saying, we had been playing in New York pretty locally just because we, like Jude said, started in the basement of our school. And one of the great things about our school is in the music program, they had a venue, basically, like in the basement. So like during lunch, we would go downstairs and play for all the kids during lunch or whatever. And then through that, we started booking shows just at New York City venues. So we had kind of played a lot of New York shows. And then we just decided that it was kind of time to try going to other cities and played really small shows. On the weekends, we would literally, like, go to school during the week, go to Dallas or Austin yeah. or whatever, play, like, for 50 people or whatever, and come back. So we had kind of set up a little um, routine for ourselves, I guess, of playing and, and touring and really wanting to do it. So we kind of just gave ourselves the key to be like, all right, you know what, we're going to go for it. And uh, COVID, we all just kind of hung out as much as we could and then kept making our next record, which was We Switched Bodies after that and just never really looked back. I mean... They've been, like, my family for so long now, so I don't really know what else I would do, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, but, yeah, we all applied to college and everything, but it was just, like, I don't know. Like, if you had the opportunity to go for it, we were all kind of, like, we might as well see where this goes before we, I don't know. And our moms were scared. They were scared. Yeah, oh, now sure. they're good, and Henry and I, our moms are coming tonight to the show in nice. Chicago. So they, it's all love now, but they were a little scared about no college. Oh, yeah. Mom, we convinced them over time, though. Yeah, moms will do. Yeah, and... Let me just let me just go back to this venue in your high school. Yeah. I don't want to stay in high school because you're clearly out of it. But yeah. this is what your origin so, story, and you yeah, kind of look, the and you're walking the yeah, you're kind of yeah. doing that for me. So um, I moved on. I don't think. <laughs> did Did you feel like that was a growing fan base, or you had kind of like a built in fan base because you were playing in high school yeah, and you had I, like fans I, already? It wasn't about the fans as much as people saw what we were doing and they were excited about it and wanted to tell their friends about it. So I feel like all of our first fans were all friends of friends. But like sure. our friends were cool. They weren't like fanning over us or anything. Well, you know? your friends, you can't expect your friends to be fans. They look no, at you crazy. I, but I don't yeah. expect them to even like the music, but the fact that they talk about it is like the best form of support that we could ever ask for. So we, we love you, friends at home. Yeah, and it was funny too, because like we would do our little tours or do our little shows, and then it was not like we were anything special at all in high school. Like in New York, like everybody has their own thing going on. So we were not very like the talk of the town by any means. But yeah, like, we just started playing during lunch, and people would show up, and it was, like, the first show we played outside of school was all of our friends, and then the second show we played at the same venue was, like, a bunch of people we didn't know, and then we were, like, whoa, that's cool, and they know the words, and I'm, like, and so that that was, like, the moment where we were kind of, like, whoa, this could really be something if yeah. you want to make it something. Yeah, and you don't need a college degree or a high school degree <laughs> to start a band, so Absolutely from the not. moment we started, there was no, like, oh, we're, like, a kid band or anything like that like we were just like we're a band we made an album and then we played our first show and people showed up and we've been doing it ever since we fell in love that night so from the first show you played it was oh, like yeah. you're like this is kind of it Although, yeah this fun fact, is it. the first show that they we ever played i was not present it was the, it was a four-piece laundry day set yeah because it was lunch. during lunch so he sort of couldn't make it <laughs> a lunch it was set? like it was a 10 minute set during lunch and i was so nervous henry and i had a class before and i was yeah, freaking I out. I was really scared. We got nervous before our first show out of school as well. I remember we went on stage and the song started with me playing bass and Jude singing. Yeah. And we were both having our own crises, crisis sees separately. Crises separately. Crises, yeah. yeah uh, I know what you mean. Something like that. I was throwing up in my mouth and he thought I was playing in the wrong key. And he started singing. You're like, I'm vomiting. I singing actually, a different, completely it was, wrong. And we, we figured it out. It worked out. Yeah, it's been fun. And now we're here. So yeah, tour's been great. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want, I want to just uh, highlight what you said about the word of mouth. And for those yeah. playing at home, yeah. make sure that you are talking about your favorite bands, that you're telling people about your favorite bands, because in this age of dead music and streaming, uh, that is still one of the best ways to oh, get sure. yeah to get a band to be more noticed or even to just big up a band. So keep doing that word of mouth and we'll get more laundry days in studios. So, yeah. Right. Um, your last song, Dysmorphia, I just got a question about that. I'm wearing this Jordan jersey. Indeed. I bought this in high school. I am older than high school, if you can believe it. Um, and I bought this when the Bulls were still doing their three-peat shit. And my weight wow. has fluctuated quite a bit since then. But this morning, this jersey fit on me, and I was very excited to wear it. 
Um, how different do y'all look from high school, and how do you stay? It's subtle. So adorable. It's <laughs> subtle. We went through our phases. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like I, I look in the mirror. I'm like, I don't look that different. But in, in high school, I had a, a buzz cut, and I was covered in acne. Mm -hmm. True, the acne yeah. it definitely improved. Yeah, safe, definitely. safe to say we all glowed up, to say the least. Yeah. It's been a process, and since we've been with each other, like, every day for the past seven years, like, we literally haven't been apart for longer than a month in that whole time. <laughs> it happens very gradually, you know what yeah. I mean? It's not like years go by, and I see Jude, and he's like, oh, my God, you look so different. Yeah. Sure. But then I look back at old pictures, and I'm like, wow, <laughs> we were infants. It's crazy. I think, yeah, we definitely had a glow up. And looking back, we just cringe at our old music sometimes. We cringe at our old photos because that's what you do when you grow. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And that's how I really know that we've changed. Because you cringe at the old stuff. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. that's exactly. how. That is the prime but, indicator. But every like, day Ooh. on his phone, he gets like his screensaver is all these old photos. Yeah. Let's see. And so we keep cringing every day. <laughs> what is that? Is that me? Yeah, oh, there you go. Oh my goodness! Look at that. That was a good. That was a decent phase. Yeah. I should have conditioned more, but. <laughs> so who's the most vain in this band? I think I have an idea, but most vain. <laughs> it's probably the rhythm section. I feel like. Over there. Yeah, definitely somewhere over there. I'm yeah. not gonna name names. I, I won't deny that. How many styles were y'all raised on? You have so many collective sensibilities. Like, what really like um, kind of captured you before being in a band, but just as a musician? It's like a it's like a Venn diagram. We all have common influences, but we each come from unique backgrounds. So you hear it in our music. We each kind of, we like to say we bring a different flavor to the smoothie, different mm. fruit to the smoothie. Mm. Um, and it's like all our parents played us different stuff. Even just before we met each other in middle school, we all had different niches. And then when we came together in high school, there was a lot of stuff that we just kind of shared and bonded over. And that became like the real foundation of our sound today. Um, notably, a lot of hip hop. Um, a lot of like other like '90s all and classic rock stuff like that, but really in 2016 when we were freshmen in high school. It was it was just hip hop, honestly. I think too like having influences is so important because you don't really realize what you're being influenced by as well. Like Jude and I used to do musical theater as well, and now listening to our music back, especially like the recorded version, it's like wow, you can totally hear all that, even yeah. though in the moment we're not really thinking about it. So I think. Um, we were all very lucky to just like hear music, be in a big music city kind of our whole lives and be so influenced by the things around us. And I think, too, we were so inspired by other bands doing their thing. And like we wanted we were kind of in that era where like you could do everything yourself and post everything yourself and uh, run your own social media and make your own. Like we were just a fun fact I like to say is like we had our website and like our first merch piece before we even like ever played together as a band like we were just so into the idea of being a band in this modern age I guess so we were inspired not only by the music but also by people living the life that we wanted to live you know like Tyler the creator for example we were just obsessed with the idea that he was doing this all himself and it was just someone filming him with a camera and he had the power to reach so many people so we were just like we want to do that and bring all of, like the childhood music lessons and all the musical theater and all the jazz funk rock, hip-hop stuff, like, we just want to make it us, and we know that we have a good charisma together, so we were just excited to, like, be on our grind, social media-wise, yeah. and internet-wise, and making shirts and stuff, we loved it, the whole process. I feel like we're still in that phase, too, like, we're, we're 21, we're still finding new music every day, sure. and kind of building it, and, like, on this tour, we're opening for Neon Trees, and everybody's way older than us, and so they kind of look at us like the little brothers, which is kind of <laughs> cute, but... Our he sound so guy much. we're working with, shout out to Luke. He's this awesome Australian dude. Um, he's like, you guys don't know what, like, you guys don't know what you're doing. Like, you guys just <laughs> oh, this play accent. a million, you know, like, what, and I think that's kind of our charm, but I think we're just still in that phase of just always exploring new stuff, and hopefully that never changes, but I, of course, over time, you kind of find your niche, but we're doing whatever we want. This next song is going to be completely different than the first two. <laughs> Oh, well, let's get into it. Let's, right. Let me hear this let's very it. different next but watch, song. We're going to switch up. Sora's going to go okay. to drums. We wear many hats, as you're about to say. Y'all are so dramatic, and I love it. It's very dramatic. Yes. And this is how we wrote the song, so that's why we do this live. They switch it up. It's how I wrote this keys part, and Sora was playing drums in the studio. So let's do this. And then live, and I do a little dance every night. I'm like, I know, but like, Yeah, this transition usually is a little, a quick moment. <laughs> do your dance. End of dysmorphia. Let me go on. <laughs> All right, yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. Sorry. Wait. Let me just plug in. <laughs> we in tune. And just a little bit more background about this song is like, even though on our stage we have our current formation, 
we all play every instrument, and when we're recording, we're all bouncing around in like a very spastic kind of way. So the reason we are switching now is just because how the song was written. You know what I mean? So we're just honoring that. And he ties a beast at keys, so here we go. And y'all gonna see Sora play drums. Can't wait. Let's do it. Where are we going? Like 
everybody listening, to everybody watching. We are launching today from New York City, everybody. This is a song called You Know You Need Unique New York. It goes like this. It goes, you know you need unique New York. You know you need unique New York. That's right. New York. It goes, you know you need unique New York. Okay, like, you know you need unique New, New York. Cool. It goes, you know you need unique New York. Okay, you know you need unique New York. It's a, you know you need unique New York. You got it? Let's try a little faster. It goes, you know you need unique New York. You know you know you need unique New York. Hey, you know you need unique New York. You know you know you need unique New York. Hey, you know you need unique New York. You know you know you need unique New York. Hey, you know you need unique New York. Let's go. It don't make any sense. We out, put our pants on the same way in the morning. Walk out your door such a day in the morning. Put the butter on the bread, spread away in the morning. I can't explain how the class divides when the bell rings. I Classified to the same code over there You see the name stoners and the name partners HP put the bass on a set You know you need unique New York You know you know you need unique New York Hey, You know you need unique New York You know you know you need unique New York Hey, You know you need unique New York You know you know you need unique New York Hey, You know you need you Alright, you know it It goes back in the cafeteria Wasn't worried about the mad test last period I was worried about my girlfriend If we serious Wasn't worried about the world And then gone delirious Gone delirious But now I can't explain How the class divide When the bell rings I didn't get to classify Took the days over I just wanna days over Another day on an HP flip With the bass on them You know you need Yes, sir. You just heard You Know You Need Unique New York, a sweet ditty and tongue twister yes. by none other than Laundry Day. Woo. Crushing it. I spend a good amount of time myself in Sunset Park, Brooklyn, mm. working on music with a longtime collaborator. Shout out to Optics. Um, I also had family members who lived right across the river in North Bergen, New Jersey. Yes. Um, I've had a lot of good New York City or surrounding area days, mm. but what's a perfect day in New York look like to y'all? It definitely involves an electric city bike. Have you ever been on one of those? No. Definitely. <laughs> They're amazing. It's like my, it's like we do it a lot together. It's our best way to explore the city, get around the city. Basically, these giant electric bikes you can just unlock on the street. It can take you everywhere, faster than a car, faster than a train. The sun is also probably shining. Yep. We're probably eating some of our favorite food because, yep. I mean, we love to talk about just our favorite spots in the city. We're probably sitting in grass somewhere. Can you tell me about some of these favorite food spots? Ooh, this is as eclectic as our music, probably. Yeah. As yeah, much as I would eat. like to gatekeep, we, we yeah, have to we, give up the spot. Don't yeah, you got it. Up, <laughs> don't gatekeep no, food. That's okay, the worst. Okay. So there's this amazing, we all talk about this all the time. There's this amazing family run burrito place in the East Village nice. called Zaragoza. Classic. I yeah. mean, go support them go support. and get yourself a good burrito. And listen, in Bushwick, our guy, Ellie, Peter Point. Yes. Yes. Ellie. Indeed. He wasn't expecting that shout out, but I just gave it to him. <laughs> and he's definitely not watching this right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if he has. But no, I'm not even. But he's fed us. <laughs> Only Israeli food in Bushwick. My family is Israeli, and somehow, like, right next to us, there's an Israeli restaurant. So it's a blessing. It works. Yeah. I also think so just good. the best thing about, like, waking up in New York City like for a great New York City day is that you hear the city going on out your window. It's mm. unavoidable. If you can't hear the city when you wake up, then you're not in the city. And uh, you just want to get out there and be part of it. We love the noise. We've been on tour. We stay in some random, random, random places. We, where did we just say it called? We Mommy. Mommy, Ohio. Mommy, Ohio. <laughs> M- well, how did you spell it? M-A-U-M-E-E. Mom. I mean, no disrespect, but it, it was pretty quiet. Just it's saying, y'all bit, too quiet over in Mommy. It's scary, yeah. but Mommy, you got to just give us some noise. Give us some horns to or something. To be fair, though, we're like in the Spring Hill Suites by Marriott on literally the side of the interstate. We've been lucky enough to stay with some of our family members, like namely Henry Pearl's family members, Jude's <laughs> family members. And that's a different vibe because you're invited into a community. You're invited into a home. And it's like all these places have like, you know, vibrant culture. But when you're on the side of the road just driving for eight hours a day, stopping in the Marriott, you're not going to see that. But we miss so, New York. We do. We do. Jude's, we'll be back soon. We'll be back soon. Jude's grandma made us snickerdoodles, and oh, yeah. they were oh. so good. So good. Those Thank you, Mima. Shout out to Mima and Pop-Up. Totally. Thank you for feeding them snickerdoodles. Um, seriously. 
Uh, I got a shout out before this question goes by. I got a shout out George's on Graham Avenue. Get yourself a seven dollar Cuban sandwich. Wow. It's great. Got a shout out Winson Bakery. Get yourself a scallion bacon, Ooh. egg and cheese. Oh my god! <laughs> okay. So good. Yes. I'm and gonna a- oh, ask great. you this list uh, when we. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot. It's extensive, but we like, love it. Yeah, yeah, our like perfect day consists of a lot of noise, making some music together, eating food together, hanging out. I think eventually we need like an Anthony Bourdain kind of show. Yes. That's in the works in okay. our minds. I mean, I saw on your YouTube you have, you know. Yeah, we got some. We've been got vlogging. Some stuff. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. One day, like. Fold in food. Yeah, something special in. where we just go on the road and we just eat everywhere and it's like a whole reality. It'll be, it's going to happen. It'll happen. It's going to be great. Might as well. Um, so in the last break, you kind of mentioned that hip hop brought your band together and you bonded mm-hmm. over it. Uh, I, in my stockings of you, um, I heard 2016, and specifically that year. <laughs> year 2016 yeah. hip-hop was something your band bonded over early. So what is on your ultimate 2016 hip-hop playlist? I mean, this was the year, freshman year of high school. Like, this is formative, formative, formative. Um, so, what, I mean, for me, it was For Your Eyes Only, J. Cole. I think mm-hmm. that came out September or October of our freshman year. That was, yeah. like, the first album one of the first albums I like listened to on a Friday, like when it first came out and being like, fuck, I'm going to track through this whole thing right now. And it blew my mind. We still play it to this day. Yeah. For, for me, like going into high school and just kind of having found out about rap after my <laughs> multi-year Coldplay phase, <laughs> like listening to the life of Pablo and coloring book mm-hmm. and coming into high so school special, with that, so like special. I had something to talk about. Yeah. With these guys, for sure. Are you just buttering us up because you're in Chicago, naming Chicago rappers? Oh, that's rappers? so true. No, it's, it's just a beautiful coincidence. No, it, those are the first two rap albums I ever listened to in my life. Those yeah. are amazing rap albums. Yeah, they're the best. I'm, I'm, that's why I like it, I guess. Absolutely. They're colorful. It was also definitely to Pimp a Butterfly. We definitely bonded over that by Kendrick Lamar. Yeah, sure. Was year, that 2016, too? That was 2015. Right. No, but I'll allow it. it. I know, I'm over. scared <laughs> of like saying just, one that's not... Um, no, <laughs> and also not technically 2016, but we can't not mention Brockhampton. Like, oh yeah, they really very much yeah. laid the foundation for our band. And oh, we, and you so. know, you know what too? I remember one of my first memories with Sawyer was yep. he showed me <laughs> "Birds in the Trap" sing "McKnight" <laughs> by yes. Travis Scott. Like, we were in art class. He gave me what? Did did AirPods even exist back then? No, I feel definitely like wired. We were wired. <laughs> did AirPods? <laughs> <laughs> Ancient one, scrolls. I was like, <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. Forever changed. This? Was Blonde 2016? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that was. I mean, that's a different category. Yeah, but different yes. sort of category. But I remember listening so to that good. and finding Frank Ocean for the first time and being like, this is really amazing. And, yeah, Birds in the Trap, I remember walking to school listening to it. And I'd be like, I'm hype. I'm ready. I'm going to make friends. Like, this is me. Like, I'm so excited. That's so amazing that you said that because I definitely remember some of my school days yeah. listening to certain albums and being like, I can, I can do this. I yeah, can, yeah, this is I, me. What was yeah. it for you? Uh, because I'm old. Um, the Roots. Uh, uh, what was the album with the yellow cover? So let me oh, let me. Oh, oh, oh. I'm in front of Google yeah, right do now. It, do it, do it. Quick research. Phrenology? Yep. The one with uh, the seed 2.0 on it. The one with the brain on it. Uh, no, it was Things Fall Apart. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Things Fall Apart was my album if that I worry, made me uh, made me just know that like things were going to be okay. The funny thing about that is that like since we've kind of come out of high school in the past two years or so, like specifically when working on this last album, Younger Than I Was Before, we got way into that whole scene of like Soul Quarians, Roots, Dilla, Erica Badu, yeah. Common. I mean, you go on and on. That's very much where our heart is right now. I mean, it's, it's, we love so much stuff. But that's our latest muse, I would say. So it's cool that that was like what, uh, what was in your formative years has found us now. Absolutely. Music is either new or timeless. It's yeah. not old. Mm. Yeah, we're just saying that. I love that. Um, and also, before we got on camera, we were talking about imitation versus influence. Mm. And I want to get more into that. Um, anyone can answer. What is the difference to you, especially being like a younger band? I feel like it's just your intention, right? Like Sure we've never wanted to just copy something, but we so passionately are inspired by stuff and you want to turn it into yourself, right? Like it's just your, your sense of self in that moment to be like, I want to do this for me and not just, I love this. So I want to copy it. It's just what, so when we name all these people and then you just heard the songs we're playing, it becomes us. And I think that was on purpose. We want to turn it into our own thing. Absolutely. 
I think it's also interesting. I feel like, uh, yeah, Jude, you were saying the intention matters so much. Like, I find that I'll write stuff, and I'll be like, that's awesome. Like, that's banging. I love this. And, then I'll, and then Jude will be like, wait, that kind of sounds like this. And I was like, oh, that's that song. You know <laughs> what I mean? And like, so it always comes back in the way that, like, you have a wealth of knowledge that you're not even really thinking of when you're writing. But yeah. I always think about this, too. Like, it's the same 12 keys that everybody, Duke Ellington, Stevie, like, everyone has had the same keyboard so it's all borrowed in a sense but it's yeah. how you add your own flavor into the mix more or less so I think like the difference is oh I love this chord progression whatever I'm going to take it and just use it for myself versus like oh I found this and this reminds me of something else or this is from an era that I like or this is inspiring me to to like I don't know kind of go in that direction and then a lot of times after the fact I'll be like oh I ripped that from this or I ripped that from this without even knowing but, like, it's all borrowed, in my opinion. Like, everything is all just building this big musical, I don't know, vocabulary. It takes time to marinate, too. Like, I mean, you brought up Erica Badu. She talks about, like, before she's working on a project, she takes what she calls a downloading period, mm. where she just listens and absorbs music and whatever, and then lets it resonate, you know? So I feel like that's kind of what happens to us. It's not like we can directly turn hearing a song one day and immediately copy, or not copy, you know what I mean? Yeah, you don't want to Like, it copy, takes time yeah. to let it sit, and like Sora said earlier, like the musical theater influence that we grew up on, that we don't, like, we're not sitting there listening to musical theater on a day-to-day -day basis, but it's so ingrained in our DNA, and then it comes out later. So I feel like it just takes time, and then it becomes a part of you, and then it's your music. Absolutely. When you're thinking of songwriting at its best, you're never going to be like, Let's make a song that sounds like, or a song like, it's just gonna flow out of you when you try it. When you have some source of inspiration, that musical theater, that hip hop, that classic rock, it comes out of you whether you're conscious of it or not. You know what I mean? It's just the tools that we have. And like Sora said, the word vocabulary, which is perfect diction because like, music is a universal language and we've just built up what we've had since our childhood. You know what I mean? And the more, that stuff is like information. The more you eat, the more you consume, the wider your vocabulary will be. It's true. Um, I'm also a writer, and I have to read more before yeah, I can exactly. write more. Yeah, exactly. So um, intention is a great answer. I always talk about intention and what is your purpose in doing this, and we are all influenced by each other. So it is a beautiful thing to see even like a much younger band than, than me um, talking about this timeless music and these timeless influences because that's what keeps music exciting and totally. it's what keeps music really, really good. We take it so seriously too. Like our auxes in the van are like, that's like <laughs> war. Like it's, it's, it's real. It's like, it's your job. If you're on aux, it's like, you gotta, you gotta bring it. It's no joke. How do you distinguish who's on aux? Is it it's who's random. driving? We're, we're pretty or? fluid about it and like who drives as well. But when you're up there, like you got him. It's like a DJ it. set. It's, is it more pressure filled than this? No. Yes. <laughs> For me, yes. Yes. <laughs> all right, all right. You got oh PTSD. I can do this all day, but I run out of songs. No, we've been on it. When you, you see the headphones come on, like people, weeks. yeah. When you see the headphones come on in the back row of the van, you just look back and you're like, nobody is. You listening. failed. No, I you lost failed. Songs. I lost. You failed. Them. That's so funny. It's all about timing. You got to play the right songs at the right time. We've had some good ox moments on this tour. Totally. Those are some of the sometimes some of the best moments on the road oh, in the vehicle. Sure. Like for you're sure. just like, oh, we are vibing right now. So hard. we play games too. Like we have a game where like you play songs and you kind of create like a secret pattern. So it's like it could be like all 2016 songs, and then you like over time as you play the aux, people have to guess. We we, we get very creative with it. It's <laughs> it's it's a, a lot of hours in that a, car. It's an experience, so. and sure. we get really bored. So. I love that. Um, as far as your latest album, it's so good. Thanks. It's got so many different types of songs. Um, so what was the biggest change you've had to make during the making of your latest album? Because you got a lot like, of stuff out there. I, feel I would like... say it was like uh, a lack of reduction. Our last album, We Switched Bodies, was very, very trim. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. This song, on the other hand, is 26 tracks. And we just felt very generous with what we were making. It was like a, a period in our life where things were starting to bloom like within the music and within our personal lives and there was just more more love to give I feel like and we just didn't want to say goodbye to ideas so every single seed that we planted we saw it all the way through which I'm so proud of yeah um, mm. rather than like putting everything on the chopping block reducing to the point where it was concise and tight we just let it flow we really try not to overcook it too because like you can get to that point you know like even if it's with writing or anything where you're just revising revising and you, it's not what it was like and it's just too it's not pure anymore. So we definitely try to maintain that. Within that is some messiness that just makes it quirky and fun, but we definitely wanted to keep it 
alive and not overdo it, not make it burnt, you know? So as far as demos, are you listening to them over and over and over, or are you just yeah, like... Yeah, no, know? for sure. But honestly, like, there's definitely songs more than on our other albums where, like, the demo sounds very similar. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just because we kept it fresh. But other songs, not. It's just different, every song. To me, the biggest difference between this album is how we involved our community. Like, we sure. look at New York, and there's so many talented people, musicians, who want to take part, and they see what we're doing, and they love it, and they want to be a part of it. So we reached out to tons of people, like, through, you know, through the five of us that most of us hadn't met at any given, like, through it for any given person. And we had them come and play on the album and hang out in the studio and tell us what they thought, and it, it was great. It was so great. Ironically, it was mostly kids from that art school we didn't go to. We kind of <laughs> stole their talents. Yeah, but it's great. Yeah, shout out. I mean, string players, horn players, just, like, people our age that are either in school or trying to do this music thing as well and just bringing them into our space and... It was very, very fun, and they, they were grateful, and we were grateful. It was, it was really cool. I mean, we brought a full-size double bass into Itai's basement where we record, and it had to be, like, at an angle, yeah. you know? <laughs> but we just made it work for the music, and awesome. we had good times. Yeah, we're really lucky that, like, after having the idea, okay, we want an orchestra on every song on this album. We didn't have to go and, like, pay for studio time, pay for all these professionals. We just had a network of kids that were our age in the New York scene that we could fall back on, and they were just there to hang out and get to know us and talk to us. Um, and like we want to continue to cultivate that scene as much as we can. It's a goal we always talk about, just to be able to have a vibrant scene of people who have a place to go for, for sharing love and sharing music. Yeah, and if you're watching this and you want to make music with us, <laughs> like come record flute or piccolo. Like, <laughs> let's go. Only let's flute go. or piccolo, though, yeah. nothing else. Nothing yeah. else. <laughs> Uh, Laundry Day is very generous and collaborative. So if you have a flute and you're in New York, please <laughs> exactly. hit them up. Exactly. But um, we we overuse that C word, community, that yep. word, a lot. And it's really cool to hear you all talk about having one and being able to open up your studio and having other people come in and like make the music even better. So that's, that's super dope. And um, getting older and being wholly into music is like a selfish as well as a yeah. selfless thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, how do you combat displacement from your friends and family away when you're on these like hectic road schedules? We're still figuring it out. Still I mean, we're out. again, like I said, on tour with these adults and there's people that have kids and are married and I'm sitting there being like, wow, like I just don't know how you do it. And like, I think every tour and every experience is different. Um, but I think you just kind of have to take it one step at a time. Like, we've all had our ups and downs with it. Um, I think the best thing and the most lucky thing that we have going is everyone supports it at the end of the day. Um, we've never had a family member or a partner be like, no, this sucks, or don't do this. This is not going to work out. So if you have that, you're in a good spot. And then it's just communication and patience. and Yeah, but it's, it's a weird life. You know, it's Absolutely. a weird, weird, weird life, and we're learning that every time we go back out on tour, and we're still really figuring it out every time. I think there is a mix totally. I think it's also interesting being on tour and being with a lot of people where it feels so much like a job for everyone. I think what's amazing about it, though, is like Jude was saying, we feel like the little babies on tour, like we're the little kids of the group. So for me, like there's something actually really grounding about the stability of like wherever I am in whatever city we're doing the show every night and I could just go give whatever I got in the tank, you know what I mean? And I think it was hard for a while because I felt like I had to be a different version of myself or I had to be, I don't know, more alive, more energetic than I was at a certain moment or more whatever. And I feel like we've all really come to terms now with just like, we know the set, it feels really good and we can be together and like really communicate Mm -hmm. non-verbally by playing together. So that's my favorite part. It's like it makes all the driving and the tiredness worth it when you get to like sit down and play and communicate without words. And then after the show, I call my mom. Like you Mm -hmm. you just figure it out. You find a way. And like even before this tour came around, I would say that we're kind of used to living in a vacuum. Like you ask about displacement and it's definitely been a theme for us. I'd say ever since high school ended, COVID happened, you realize that New York City is a place where, unless you're enrolled in a public school, like everyone's kind of just coming and going freely. And suddenly this place where we grow up and it's really the only home we know becomes this place where people are, you know, like just, just stopping by. And uh, I, th- I would say a big change was that before, all the friends that we went to high school with, we've kept, but they also left, they went to college and we did not. That, that, was, that brought us closer together, but it also felt very lonely for a while. Now there's another element to that 
where people our age are coming in for New York City colleges. And it's great to learn things from them and gain experience, figure out where they're from and how it can change our perspective. But they also go home for the holidays. And that, again, is lonely but brings us closer together. So it's been a theme ever since this band started that like we are very much just on our own track. So I think we've come to peace with the fact that people are going to move around around us in their own pace. And like we are lucky to be able to take what we can from them and give what we can to them. And it's just the five of us in the van right now, so we're getting used to that, that isolation. Yeah, but, you know, we have so much fun together. Like, that's the main thing. So when we say goodbye to, like, our partners or our parents, they're like, ah, yeah, go have we're fun. Go do the thing. They're not like, all right, good luck. They're like, ah, get out of here, you know? Yeah, totally. It's, it's all Because we just roll. We just roll and scroll. <laughs> well, let's absolutely keep it rolling. I want to hear y'all cook a little bit more. So, yeah, yeah let's get into one. that. One, one more for you, song. It's called My Shining Star. Can't wait. It's one of my favorites on the new album. Y'all ready, boys? Let's do it.
A very, very big thank you to Laundry Day for blessing us today. And as always, major love to everyone here at Audio Tree spreading the gospel of live music. These guys are playing House of Blues tonight and are on tour. They're on tour right now. But when they're in your neck of the woods, make sure to grab tickets to see them. Also, get into all their music, including their latest album, Younger Than I Was Before, because you love great music and we want you to thrive and have it in your life. Uh, once again, likes are good, but subscribing to Audio Tree means you get these videos at the top of your feed when they drop. Get cool merch at audiotree.shop. And if you want the session audio, you can get it on Apple, Tidal, or wherever you stream your music. Finally, follow Audio Tree on social media for more fun content. I'm Psalm One, and I'm here for good music and good conversation. Till next time, stay dangerous. Peace. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Audio Tree. Thank you, Psalm. Thank you, Psalm. Thanks so much. All right. So you guys want to do it for real now?